big news gets bad news, it's good news for our news. Welcome to the St. Bernard Files, a Darkwing Duck podcast. I'm your host, Mike Russo, and joining me today for one last bonus episode before we get back to Darkwing Duck is my friend Owen Calais. Hello, welcome back. Hey, Mike, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. We just got socked by a big winter storm today on the East Coast. Uh, A lot, a lot, a lot of snow. Um, But we're doing okay. We're snowed in. I get some more days off of work. How are you doing? I'm good. Um, My... My classes for my senior year of college just started, so nice. uh, class are now in session. We really hit the ground running, and I'm excited to start my final year. Man, senior year of college, that just makes me feel so old. <laughs> <laughs> We're going back 20 years for me. Uh, I'm old enough that I was 10 when the episode we're discussing today first aired. Today, we are talking about a DuckTales episode, not 2017, the original DuckTales. Uh, We're talking about one of my personal favorite DuckTales episodes, probably my all-time favorite DuckTales episode, definitely in my top five. Um, It's the episode called The Masked Mallard. Um, Owen, what'd you think of this episode? I thought this episode was fantastic upon rewatch. Um... I remember before the DT-17 series came out, I rewatched the entire original 87 series. And this was actually one of the standout episodes for me because it reminded me of another Masked Mallard that we, that we know about. <laughs> and, that's, and that's a big reason why I chose this one as well, not just because it's my favorite. This, this episode, I know I've mentioned it on the podcast, this episode didn't inspire Tad Stones in any way to create Darkwing Duck, but it shares a lot of Darkwing Duck DNA in its crew. And it's just really, really similar, just on a very basic level, right? Right. It almost sounds like a dry run for Darkwing Duck even. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, I'm with you. I think this one's fantastic, especially because um, this is from later in the run. Uh, This isn't obviously isn't part of the original 65 episodes. This is from what most fans consider season three, which is the season with all the Bubba and Gizmo Duck episodes, um, which are which are kind of hit or miss. Most fans aren't going to tell you they like Bubba episodes all that much. Even some of the Gizmo Duck ones are kind of hit and miss. A lot of them have some problematic elements, but um, this one's probably the best of all the Gizmo Duck shows they did. Um, According to Wikipedia, at least, I don't know if the date's correct, it first aired Friday, November 17th, 1989. So this one is over 31 years old now. Wow, huh? Yeah. I I remember getting out of school. I was in fifth grade, and I would walk home. I'd rush home to watch this. Man, it makes me feel so old. When did you first see this one? I first saw this episode um, shortly before the 2017 DuckTales series came out, um, when I watched all 99 episodes of DuckTales. Oh, okay, so 2017-ish. Right. Right, right. Um, Well, this episode, um, the story editors in this one, one name's going to jump out as being very interesting. Two of the story editors on this one were Ken Kuntz and David Weimers. Um, who were the story editors on and co-producers on most of these later DuckTales episodes. But the third story editor and co-producer on this episode was Alan Burnett. Owen, was that, does that name ring a bell to you? It, it does, but I'm not exactly sure who it is. He worked on a ton of Batman shows. Batman Beyond, a whole Bat, uh, The Batman, a whole bunch of those shows. Not... And he also worked on the original, um, you know, the uh, the Batman the Animated Series show as well. Also, which makes sense with this episode, he was also the man who named Darkwing Duck. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, he was also the guy who came out with the word Darkwing. So again, we got some we got some Darkwing DNA just in the story editor here. Um, even more so with the writer of this episode. This episode was written by Len Yuli. I mentioned him on the podcast a few times. Um, He wrote a couple of Darkwing episodes. Uh, One of them was Duck Blind. The other one, believe it or not, 
was Tiff of the Titans. And oh, wow. the, the big thread in between that episode and this episode, Masked Mallard, is Gizmo Duck. Yep. And it's funny, yeah, again, lots of Darkwing DNA, even down to the production animation studio. Uh, this one was done by Wang Film Productions. Um, I'm not going to go into detail about them, because uh, listeners, if you tune in next week, uh, the episode me and Will talk about, uh, The Darkwing Squad, that one was animated by Wang as well, and we talk about them there. Um, I will say Wang is pretty fun on DuckTales. They're, it's not as good as TMS, but they really have their moments, and I think this might be one of their best shows, right up there with Double O Duck. This is a really good one, animation-wise. Um, and there's a big reason why, and I'm going to mention it when we get to that point in the episode. This episode really, really does some interesting things visually. It definitely does. So, Owen, oh, without further ado, you want to start talking about the plot? Sure, let's do it. Okay. Actually, I'm going to digress one last time. I want to go through the voice talent on this particular episode, because I think I have to give them their due. We have Alan Young as Scrooge, Rissy Taylor as the nephews, Hamilton Camp as Gizmo Duck slash Fenton, Chuck McCann as uh, Berger and Bouncer Beagle and the mayor of Duckburg. Hal Smith makes a short appearance as Gyro. Joan Gerber is Weber Walters. What do those six names sadly have in common, Owen? Sadly, Mike, they have all passed away. Yeah, um, DuckTales has the highest number of deceased voiceover talent of any Disney show. Like, really only two reoccurring voice actors on the show are still alive. Um, one is Terry McGovern, who's not in this episode. Launchpad is not in this show. The other is Frank Welker, who is in this one as Lawrence Loudmouth and Big Time Beagle. Otherwise, all the voice actors are gone. They all live long lives. They all, you know, voice their share of classic characters, but it's definitely a shame. You know, they're all gone. And, you know, this show and many other shows are their legacy. But I just wanted to make sure I mentioned them all just to give them their due. Okay, now without further ado, let's talk about the plot. Owen, why don't you start us off at how this episode starts? Well, uh, Scrooge is at this press conference where he announces... Um, the construction of it's a hotel, correct? It's a shopping center. The shopping center. The Scrooge McMall. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> then what happens? And we have one um, particular broad, um, TV broadcaster coming to interrupt this conference. One Lawrence Loudmouth. Yeah, Lawrence Loudmouth. Um, he, from everything I've read, he is specifically based on somebody in particular. I mean, back when I was a kid, I know, I know you're a lot younger than I am, but in the late 80s, early 90s, trash talk TV was really, really big. And this episode is a really big slam on that. Um, Lawrence Loudmouth, obnoxious, loud, hateful. I'm pretty sure he was directly based on a trash talk ho uh, host known as uh, Morton Downey Jr., um, who was around in the late 80s. Um, I'm pretty sure this is who, who he's based on. Uh, what does Loudmouth do to Scrooge? What's his beef with him? He, he is doing anything he can to get the rating, so he's trying to undermine Scrooge um, by basically telling saying rumors, um, trying to get the public in, on his uh, perspective, his side. So he's asking his questions like, uh, are there oil, is there oil underneath um, right. the shopping center and such? So. Yeah, like you just trying to line your pocket at the, you know, the taxpayer's expense and everything like that. Right. And, um, you know, that ruins the entire press conference. You see Scrooge come out of the building, his hat's all messed up, his, the model of the, the, the shopping center is destroyed. And honestly, you know, Loudmouth kind of admits, you know, I have nothing against you, but you're big news in this town. And when big news gets bad news, that's good news for my news. And that's really all there is to it. This guy is just a big jerk who's using Scrooge for ratings. Sure. And that's, that, that's all there is to it. Um, so Scrooge heads over to the money bin and we meet 
you know, we, we see Gizmoduck. We get our first Gizmoduck appearance in this episode. I, I won't go into too much about it, but everyone knows I love Gizmoduck. Uh, I love him more on DuckTales and Darkwing Duck, I will admit. I just think he's a fantastic character and was a great addition to the show. Uh, Scrooge comes in. Gizmoduck introduces him to all his Gizmo buddies. And the kids immediately turn on Scrooge. Uh, one kid says, you know, you know, Lawrence Loudmouth says, you steal candy from babies. And if it's on TV, it must be true. Just as relevant today as it was back in 89, isn't it? All right. All right. Yeah, you know, it was our political climate. Okay. Um, so Gizmoduck decides to save his boss and takes him home. And then what happens when Scrooge gets home, Owen? Scrooge walks into the triplets uh, watching a series um, of a hero on television. Right. And they're watching TV, and Scrooge turns off the TV. He turns it over to the news, where Loudmouth is still bad-mouthing him, saying he's an alien in disguise, and just all sorts of you know BS news that just makes Scrooge look bad. When you know uh, the nephews say this doesn't make you look good, and then Scrooge takes a look at them, and he says, well, "Neither do you." What happened to the kids? They got bullied at school for standing Why? up. Why? Yeah. And they have black eyes. And you feel really bad for them. They just want to stick up for their uncle. And he tells them, you know, you shouldn't fight. Use your heads. And they're like, yeah, we use those too. And when they pulled off their hats, they had bandages wrapped around their heads. Um, yeah. Scrooge, you know, Scrooge is like, this This guy is endangering all, all of us. I got to do something about this. Um, so he lets the kids turn their movie back on. And he gets an idea. What happens? What does he see that gives him that idea? He sees the hero in the mask, um, and he's, he figured, well, he, maybe he should do that. Yeah. Uh, it's just, I, think, what is, I don't remember the name of the hero. I think it's a Scarlet Brigand, I think one of the kids call it. And they're like, ah, he wears a mask and he saves people, but it's only a movie. And then Scrooge is like, maybe or maybe not. And... This is where the visual styling of this episode really takes a hard left turn. Um, the next scene, it's night. We're in a museum. The background styling changes completely and stays this way for most of the episode. I know we're all used to the standard painted backgrounds of DuckTales and all the other Disney shows of this era. This is something else entirely. And as far as I know, it's something really new for this kind of show that I think Batman the Animated Series and Darkwing Duck would run with. More simplistically rendered backgrounds, but in this case, like a lot of the coloring and etching almost seems like it's done with like a colored pencil kind of look. It's very sketchy, it's, but it's really, really nice. Like, what do you think of it? Just artistically, what do you think of what, they've been do what they're doing here? I thought it, it very much resembled kind of like a comic book. Um, comic book art um especially when you look at comics from especially like uh, superhero comics from marvel or dc right it looks like gotham city or or, or new york city so I, I found that very interesting given the tone and uh plot of this episode yeah it's a bold choice for this show i mean this show never really does that kind of artistic you know experimentation so this was really nice um and it's funny, this is the only, like, superhero episode from this run of DuckTales shows. They got Gizmo Duck, but they never usually use him as a superhero. So I like this one because it's really going to give these characters a chance to do more superhero kind of things. Um, who is robbing this museum? The Beagle Boys. I love these Beagle Boys. Not everybody does, but I've always been fond of the DuckTales versions of these guys, uh, Big Time Burger and Bouncer. Usually by this time in the show, they were using Baggy Beagle more than Bouncer, but I think they wanted a more threatening tone, and since Bouncer's a tougher kind of a Beagle, they're using him instead, um, and I'm cool with that. They're trying to steal the Nope Diamond, obviously a play on the Hope Diamond, um, but they're stopped by somebody. Owen, describe who shows up to stop the Beagle Boys. Well, we see a very, uh, well, we see a duck in a purple and yellow outfit. <gasps> Darkwing! Oh, never mind. <laughs> no, <laughs> no th this duck has monocles, and he has a little uh, lightning bolt on his head. And um, no, unfortunately. 
unfortunately, it's not our our Drake Mallard, but it is a certain billionaire that lives in Duckburg. Yeah, I mean, the audience pretty much figures it out right away, but nobody else right. does. Um, but I will say the similarities to Darkwing are there. The entire costume is purple, and the interior of the cape is pink. So there is there is a lot of visual similarity. Um, tell us about the encounter. What is uh, mask? What is quote unquote the mask Mallard do to these guys? Well, he uh, he sprays oil on the floor so they slip and slide and hit their heads on all the columns. And he he rests them up a little bit, you know. Um, he scares them so much they want to be arrested. Uh, Burger has a really good bit. Uh, he he you know he bouncer slips on the oil. He electrocutes big time. And Burger, who's holding him up by the cape, goes, "I'm gonna get whomped, ain't I?" Oh darn! <laughs> <laughs> and you're right. They 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 actually throw themselves into the cop car, begging to be taken to jail. And this is what I'm gonna mention for the first, but not the last time in this recording. I love the musical score to Ducktales. Not a single Disney show, in my opinion, compares to it. Even though this episode is reusing mu music cues from two years earlier, because all this stuff is reused from that first season, the stuff they recorded, Ron Jones, who is currently the music composer on Family Guy of all shows, um, <laughs> his stuff on DuckTales is phenomenal. And even when it's being chopped up and stuck into a later episode like this, it all works. Because, like, the cops look up at the top of the museum, and there's Scrooge perched on the top, cackling and laughing, and the music builds, and it's really well done. I I love it. And again, I'll, I'll point out some additional music cues as we go on. Um, just really quick, what is your opinion on the music of DuckTales? Oh, I, you know, if, if you wanted to point that out, I would have never noticed, because it seems so, I guess it's just the setting that they're in, and... Um, it just seems so distinct from the rest of the series, but in this scene, it really, um, it really builds to through to the reveal of the masked Mallard and the Beagle Boys. I think, I think it's a really phenomenal scene with some music. Um, but yeah, I I think it's fantastic. So the Beagle Boys are taken away. The masked Mallard leaves. What happens next? Well. Uh, Scrooge heads back to um, Gyro's shop, his little um, garage shed, yeah. where it's revealed that he's actually the one building his weapons. Makes sense. Makes sense. You would go to Gyro, and for once, all of his all of his inventions are actually working. Um, the big the big invention he points out, which is gonna you know this is foreshadowing. It does come back, is a laser cane, which works by whistling. And that does come back later in the episode. So all of Duckburg loves Scrooge, uh, the masked mallard, excuse me. All of Duckburg loves him. The only person who doesn't is who? Lawrence Loudmouth. Yeah, he's, he, you know, he, he doesn't buy it at all. And, you know, he's still bad-mouthing Scrooge as well. Beautiful, beautiful shot of Scrooge watching in his study. Like, he's... The light is coming in from the, the window at night, and you see the crossbars of his window shadowing on his face. It's a really beautiful shot. Yeah. Um, but then he hears in the news there's a hostage situation, so he heads off to deal with this. Um, what happens now? Well, the, um, the hostages reveal that they are holding the council hostage. Um, I'm sorry. The, the people there are holding the council hostage, um, and mm -hmm. the mask Mallard shows up and um, ends up rescuing everyone there um, with his futility belt, I might add. <laughs> it's futile but, to escape. That's why I call this my futility belt. <laughs> it's great. I thought that was a fantastic line. I think I even texted you about that. How, how you did. E even better, though, he tells the felons to raise their hands. And the felons do. And then all the city councilmen who are tied up raise their hands, too. Yes. And yes. Scrooge is like, not you, just them. <laughs> yeah. And they kind of look sheepishly towards, you know, it's a great Jeez, guy. I, geez, I wonder. 
Um, again, more fantastic music when he swings in and saves the day. Really, really, really great stuff. Um, so what goes on now? He's he's saved the day twice. What take us to the next scene? What happens? He comes in and so Scrooge goes home and he he didn't change from his his superhero outfit. So the, the three boys walk in and they discover his identity. And they're thrilled. Um, they oh, have yeah. a genuine superhero in the house. Yeah. And okay, another great line. Scrooge tries to explain, you know, he's doing good deeds in disguise, so people will trust him. They'll, they'll know he's a good egg. And one of the nephews goes, "So if people knew you, um, so if people knew you weren't really Scrooge, they wouldn't think you were automatically doing something sneaky and dishonest." <laughs> and Scrooge <laughs> is like something like that. Like. <laughs> It's such a good line, too. This, really, this episode is full of great lines and gags. It, it's amazing. God, it had a really good writer. Um, so yep. Scrooge stays at a press conference where he's going to reveal who the Masked Mallard actually is. You know, he's happy about it, you know. But who ruins his, who ruins his good time? Oh, uh, the one and only Lawrence Loudmouth. Lawrence Loudmouth. I mentioned before he's voiced by Frank Welker, right? Yes. Yeah, giving him the most obnoxious voice possible. It's like, this is a character you hate. There's nothing like a bull about this guy. Like, whenever he's on screen, you, you just want him to go away. And that's good. You're supposed to hate him. But what does he say? What, what, what's the bomb that Loudmouth drops? That the masked mallard robbed the bank. He holds up a newspaper with the masked mallard robbing the bank. Spoiler alert, Owen, who's the masked mouth? We, we know who this guy is. Right. Yeah, we, I, you know, let's not even spoil it. I mean, if you haven't seen it while you're listening to this, but obviously it's not Scrooge. You can tell by the picture. But Scrooge is so dumbfounded, he can't even talk on his own behalf. You know, Mess Mallard's a fraud. Basically, that's how it's going. Um, so Scrooge's reputation as the masked mallard is totally ruined now. Um, so after our commercial break, we go to a, an art museum, right? This is an art museum, correct? Yes. And everyone's kind of murmuring it to themselves about what a creep the masked mallard is. Scrooge is there because Scrooge has to be at these things. And, you know, he runs into somebody who we haven't seen out of costume yet. Who does he run into? Fenton Crackshell. Yeah, Fenton's there dressed in a tacky orange and black plaid suit. Scarf and down hors d'oeuvres. Um, yeah, he's just there for the free food, basically. Fenton has to be in this scene. He, he has to for a reason that's going to come up. Um, you know, Fenton's like, how about that masked mallard? He sure turned out to be some kind of creep, didn't he? <laughs> and he's like, yeah. he's slapping Scrooge on the back and like, ha, ha, ha. And Scrooge is not happy about it. Um, so they unveil um, the mayor of Duckburg, you know, voiced by Chuck McCann unveils napoleon solid gold what popcorn bowl yeah it wouldn't be ducktales or even darkwing duck if the artifact wasn't something ridiculous All right so our masked mallard imposter shows up you can tell by the voice who's the imposter let's Lawrence. not even yeah yeah who is it lawrence loudmouth yeah we we can tell just by the voice he swings in, steals the popcorn bucket, bursts out the window. Everyone runs outside. And who shows up to at least try to save the day? Old Gizmo Duck. Oh, God, I love Gizmo Duck so much. I, you know, let me just go in a mini rant about Gizmo Duck, on, at least on DuckTales. I love the design. I love how Wang, the animation studio, I love how they animate him. They animate him with such confidence. He's such a hard character to draw, and I can't even imagine how hard it would be to animate. When when me and um, Andrew Wallace reviewed Up, Up, and Awry with the animator, um, Derek Bond, he told us just how tough Gizmoduck was to draw and animate. But Wang does a great job on him, and the music, Gizmoduck has his own theme. You hear it playing here, and it's like, I love it. It's just really great stuff. You know, we can't put in audio clips, but you guys listen to the episode, enjoy it. Um, how does the encounter between quote unquote the masked mallard and Gizmo Duck go, Owen? Uh, not so well for Gizmo. Um, oh yeah. 
Oh yeah, he, he gets uh he gets a little gift from from uh, Loudmouth. And Sky rockets him into the ground. Yeah. And, and, uh, oh, go Scrooge, ahead, Mike. Oh, so I'm sorry. Scrooge goes to check on him, and he's all crushed. He's all tiny and smashed. <laughs> yeah. Singing, I'm a little teacup. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so what happens now? So now uh, Loudmouth is on his talk show, you know, really um, getting into to both the Mask Mallard and Scrooge saying how atrocious both of them are. Basically. And Scrooge has had it. So Scrooge hatches a plan. He's going to go out as the Mask Mallard, find the imposter, drag him on the Loudmouth show, unmask him, and then get them both off his back. So he heads out. This next scene is really, really beautiful. It's really well done. There's no dialogue. Um, we just have shots of Scrooge patrolling the rooftops while some really great, great background music plays. He's bouncing off rooftops. He's swinging around. He's searching for the fake and fake masked mallard. It's really, really nice stuff. And they end in a great joke where they pull into him perched on a uh, rooftop. And you think he's being very stoic like Batman. Turns out he just fell asleep. Yeah. It's real. And he, 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 spot, he finally does spot loud mouth. But before he can do anything, who shows up? Gizmo. Gizmo Duck shows up. Um, they have a quick fight. They crash to the ground. Then Gizmo Duck grabs him and tears off his mask for everyone to see. Uh, that was a big mistake. Yeah. Well, there goes this year's Christmas bonus. And yeah, and this is when Gizmo Duck gets really dense. Like Scrooge tries to like reason with him. He's like, "Didn't you just see me and the mess mount outside the art museum?" Yes. Doesn't that doesn't that give you a clue? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's he's like he's like, but I have to bring you in if you don't mind. Um, Scrooge is having nothing nothing to do with that, and he leaves. Yeah. Um, rockets off in his pogo cane. I don't, I don't think that was a nod to the NES game. I don't even know if that had come out yet. Um, but, um, yeah, so Scrooge heads away, and now, unfortunately, he is a wanted criminal. He can't even go home. Tell us about what's going on in Scrooge's miserable life right now, Owen. Well, he he's really down in the dumps, but you know what? The only thing keeping him going is... Nice cup of justice. He's going after Loudmouth. Yes. He figures out it's Loudmouth because he wanders over to an old, you know, electronic store and there's a TV playing and it finally dawns on Scrooge. How come Loudmouth is the only one with photos of the fake masked mallard? Like, how is that? And it finally dawns on him like, hmm, maybe there's something going on here. So Scrooge goes up, he sneaks up into Loudmouth's apartment, opens his closet spots the extra masked mallard costume, figures it out, and then is knocked senseless by a vase. Loudmouth knocked him silly. I really love, there's a piece of animation here that's absolutely gorgeous. You fade in to the building in the distance, and the and it's anime, it's drawn, it's a piece of animation, and the camera trucks in on it, and the building moves toward the camera like, perfectly it's so well animated and we see scrooge tied to the flagpole yes so what's loudmouth's final plot he's hanging scrooge out to dry he's gonna go do one more crime and then he's gonna run off to what does he call he doesn't call it rio de janeiro he calls it something else he kind of messes with the name I don't know, but he, but he plans to skip town and leave Scrooge responsible for the crimes. And Scrooge doesn't have his ut futility belt on him, so he can't do anything. He's stuck on the tele flagpole. Yes. So, so what goes on now? Take it from here, Owen. How's our big climax fight start? Well, Scrooge realized that Loudmouth didn't switch out the canes. Yep. And that his cane is still upstairs with him. So he has to whistle in order for the laser to go off to, un I guess, uh, burn the ropes of his flagpole. 
it also it also cuts the flagpole off too. Right. <laughs> and um, so Scrooge Scrooge grabs the cane uh, because. Just as Loudmouth grabs a whole stack of uh, gold bars and is ready to skedaddle and leave Duckburg, Gizmoduck shows up again. He think, And he thinks he's up against Scrooge. So he is going to pull his punches. Yes. But Loudmouth just opens a can of whoop tushy on him, basically. Yeah. Um, and goes like every weapon he can find he's tossing at gizmo duck he's everything including the kitchen sink and if you look really fast he throws the kitchen sink at gizmo duck because they're they're in a junkyard now he's like throwing everything he's got at him including a bomb um great kinetic animation here of the characters just he's beating the crap out of gizmo duck throwing things at him and gizmo duck's getting thrown aside the music is like one of the best action cues on ducktales is playing right now I, one of my favorite DuckTales cues. It's fantastic. I'm glad they chose it. Um, and then Loudmouth um, picks up Gizmo Duck using a giant, you know, one of those, uh, you know, garbage magnets, like car magnets. Right. Um, really cool animation. Gizmo Duck spiraling toward the magnet and getting stuck to it. Really, really good stuff. This is some of the best animation in the episode because it's really moving, really frenzied pace. Um, and then Lo- Loudmouth is going to feed him into a car crusher. Just before he's able to do it, who shows up, Owen? Scrooge! Scrooge yep. shows up. He's like, say goodbye, Gizmo Geek. And then Scrooge goes, you say goodbye, but I say hello. And it sounds so corny, but <laughs> it's like a, such a great entrance. And this is when the music is going dun 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 It's like, it's, the music is like exploding. Scrooge is like fighting him one-on-one with the canes. Like, it's actually the kind of energy... Don't kill me, Darkwing fans. You don't usually get on Darkwing Duck. Like, this is really wild stuff as they're fighting all through the junkyard. The cops show up with their helicopters, and Gizmo Duck goes, I'm seeing double. It's really great stuff. How does Scrooge beat Loudmouth? What does he do? He, he, uh, he, tosses, the, he tosses his cane into the, to the, uh, uh, the column, correct? Yeah, Loudmouth's cane gets stuck. Yeah. And he's like, don't don't hurt me, McDuck, I'm unarmed. And then Scrooge is like, oh, then you need this, and throws the cane at him. Loudmouth misses, it falls, and the cops around him, and that's the end of Loudmouth. Yeah. So take us to the ending. How does this episode end, Owen? Well, Scrooge decides he's done with his superhero persona, and he shreds his outfit um, with Finn. And yeah. where Fenton uh, says that Loudmouth is now in a penitent in, in the prison. Um, and I'll, I'll let you take it from here, Mike. Okay, well, Fenton says he's doing, what does he say? He's doing weather and sports in the penitentiary. There's a moment where Scrooge and Fenton connect. They rarely ever connect because that, the, the dynamic, they don't really connect. But Scrooge is like, you know, I shouldn't have picked this costume to solve my problems. It just gets in the way. And Fenton says, you know, sometimes I have the same problem, um, which is nice to see them, you know, connect on a similar a similar ground here. Hopefully Scrooge respects Fenton a little bit more about what he has to go through as Gizmo Duck. Um, as Scrooge is ready to walk, you know, open the door and leave his study, he's like, I n- hope I never see a costume like that ever again. Who comes into the room, Owen? Huey, Dewey, and Louie. What and are they super- wearing? Superhero outfits. They call themselves the Titanic Trio, right? Yes. Something like that. And Scrooge runs out yeah. screaming. And the kids are like, hey, great costumes. They're working already. <laughs> and um, it's just great stuff. I mean, I know when me and Will review Darkwing, we spend more time on like the dialogue and the jokes and the references. DuckTales doesn't have as much of that. I think which makes talking about individual episodes tough. I wouldn't want to do every single episode of it. But this episode I love so much and it's just so much fun that I felt like this had to be the one. If I had to talk about any of them, it was going to be this one. Right. And Owen, I'm glad you were on with me to discuss it. Like the only other one I'd like to do at some point would probably be Double O Duck. Because in terms of Darkwing Duck lineage, that one's even more important. Right. 
So maybe maybe in time we'll get we'll round back to that one. But yeah, the masked mallard. It's I don't know if it's my all time favorite because there's some season one episodes I love, but it's definitely again it's in my top five and it's probably one of the episodes I've seen the most. Um, especially now that it's easily available. I mean, you can get it on Disney Plus. It's actually on DVD. So there's many, many ways to see it. Um, let's rate this episode. If we're going to, you know, let's do out of five lucky dimes. Um, <laughs> All right. So, Owen, how many cents do you want to give the Masked Mallard? I am going to give it five. What, what, we're going to say five lucky dimes? Five out so of five? So that's 50 cents. Yes. 50 cents. Oh, you're giving it a flat out five. That's fantastic. Um, yes, this is this is actually a DuckTales episode that if I were to go back and watch um, some episodes of the series, this is one that I would go to. Um, you know, uh, there there are some standout episodes for sure, like you said, Double O Duck. Um, but I I I love the Mask Mallard for uh, a multitude of different reasons. Not only because it reminds me of Darkwing, but it, it also it also seems to remind me of the Batman animated series. Definitely. Um, so there, there are different aspects of this that I, I enjoy. I think, and I think you summed it up pretty well with the music and the, the artistic style, with um, this, the sketches in the back. Uh, I, I think there was a level. I, I won't so, go so far as to say gritty tone, but it seemed like a uh, a little bit darker than the other episodes that we have in the series for DuckTales uh, that's for sure yes so um those are the probably the primary reasons why I like this episode so much and also because I know it you know it didn't directly go into Darkwing Duck but it, it certainly reminded me of our favorite uh Drake Mallard absolutely there's I know it wasn't a direct influence like we both agreed but it's there the lineage is there for sure Yep. And I'm going to give this one five Lucky Dimes as well. So that'll be a, a straight 50 cents. Um, for all the reasons we talked about, the music, the visual style, just I love the superhero stuff in this. It really gives Gizmoduck a chance to actually be a superhero. He never really got to do that on DuckTales, apart from maybe fighting a giant robot once in a while. Because... Um, I will talk a bit more about how I feel about how Gizmoduck is used on DuckTales. There are so many episodes where they don't care much about Gizmoduck. They just care about Fenton. So either Gizmoduck appears briefly or he's just a deus ex machina at the end of the episode. But this one like uses him like as an integral part of the story. Like He needs to be in this one, and he's fighting a supervillain, basically. And I love that he's used the way he's used in this one. But it's still Scrooge's story. And there's so many episodes where Fenton just takes over. And this one gets to be a Gizmoduck show while Scrooge is still the lead character. And I like it for that. It's not as goofy or as outright silly as the later episodes usually are. A lot of those episodes are pretty silly. A lot of them are just like really corny and don't hold up. But this one is this one still holds up. It's over 30 years later. And you can point to this one and say, this is one of the best. Absolutely. So, yeah, five lucky dimes I'm going to give this one. I love it. So, oh, and any, any final thoughts on this episode? No, uh, I don't think so. I, You know, I, I just thought um, the lines were great, the gags were great. Um, you know, me and my futility belt lie, I, I love that line. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, you know, I, I think there is so many connections with this and, and Batman, you know, being, being the billion there of a city and you know being the vigilante it, it's very interesting that uh you said it was alan barnett what yeah was working on this yes I, I i didn't know that i i think that's very interesting and it really ties into the uh other batman series going forward and i don't think that the first michael keaton batman film was an influence here the time frame doesn't exactly fit even though that film came out first this was this was in production long before that. Um, I'm wondering how much of this is based on the Frank Miller stuff. It could be. That was pretty I big wonder. at that point. Um, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, either way, this one's just this one's just fantastic. I love it. Um, so next week, 
we are getting back to reviewing Darkwing Duck episodes. We are starting off the last 12 Disney Afternoon episodes with the Darkwing Squad, which has some interesting firsts, a few lasts, and I may or may not have the script to this one. I'll let you guys tune in next week to find out what may or may not be different from the finished episode. Believe me, there's some cool stuff. Um, so that's next week, the Darkwing Squad. Um, Owen, is there anything you'd like to plug before we go? Well, um, if you guys don't know, I do help run the Twitter page for the St. Canard Files. So it's the St. Canard Files on Twitter. I would, Thank you um, for that. Yeah, of course. Um, and then uh, I am on TikTok. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, at Owen Kale. Um, that's about it for me. I also oh I also run a podcast for my university called uh, Nickels Worth the Listen. Um, there we just talk about entertainment news. Um, we did touch we did touch upon uh, Let's Get Dangerous, the new Ducktales episode focusing on Darkwing uh, for one episode. But other than that, we we tend to focus on other um, entertainment news such as Disney. Or I think last episode we talked about KFC. So <laughs> nice, that's random. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, um, oh yeah. Hey, hey. Hey, you can't go wrong with fried chicken. Um, right. And, you know, usually Will does shout-outs. I'll do a few shout-outs. Not to, not to any friends of ours, but I do want to, again, I want to shout-out to all the all these voice actors we've lost over the years. Again, Alan Young, Rusty Taylor, Hamilton Camp, Chuck McCann, Al Smith, Joan Gerber, but also Tino and Sanya, Christine Cavanaugh, Kenneth Mars, all these wonderful people, June Foray, Dana Hill, who made these shows we loved as kids come alive and who have all sadly left us. I want to shout out to all of them. I mean, I know they never hear this. They, they can't hear this, but you know, you guys were our childhood. We love you guys. You know, we're, you know, we'll always remember your work. Thank you very much for the amazing stuff you've given us. And of course, the St. Canard Files, a Darkwing Duck podcast. You can find us on all major podcast po uh, podcast apps. Excuse me, uh, Stitcher, Spotify, Google, iTunes, um, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, and you can also watch us on YouTube as well. Um, you could also join our communities on Facebook. You, we're also on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We have a Facebook page for the podcast and a Facebook group where anybody can join and post whatever they want. Um, and I think that's it. So, Owen, thank you very, very much for being a part of this episode. Hopefully we can do this again sometime. Yes, thank you so much for having me. It was a real pleasure talking some DuckTales. woo -hoo. That had <laughs> to happen sooner or later, right? Oh, yeah. One of us was going to do it. Yeah, definitely. What a great theme song. I didn't even get to mention that. Uh, again, sorry, guys. I know recently Will and a couple of other friends ranked the Disney Afternoon theme songs. I'm right there with them. DuckTales is number one. Sorry, Darkwing Duck. DuckTales is just that much better. I'm sorry. But yeah, woo, -hoo, DuckTales. <laughs> um, so up in, until next time, stay dangerous and have a great night. Have a good night, everybody. Blather and blatherskite. <laughs>